Hello there everybody and welcome to this channel. My name is Savvy from SAAnatomy.com and for today's video we're going to be working on a little rabbit. So get your reference images ready, get your drawing pads or whatever you use to do this work and let's get started. So starting off, we always do the same thing. We just block everything out. We make sure that we have a base mesh. You can also just model everything out properly, depending on what you want to use the sculpt for or the end model for. If you want to animate it, then sure, you can have proper topology into your base mesh. You can actually work on a proper metapologized model. If not, if it's just going to be static, then just keep following me and we're just going to sculpt this little this little rabbit and have some fun so what i wanted to do here uh was just just with the basics i was just kind of ignoring all the good topology rules i was beveling all like extremely uh just to just to get that nice shape just to make sure that the the curve of of certain certain geometries just looked right and this was just because I knew that uh, it would be a hassle for me to try and smooth everything out properly right at the end. As you can see over here, it just kind of looks smooth enough so I don't have to do extra work and all that. Uh, we actually entered the sculpting phase a lot quicker than, than we usually do. Um, but that's because uh, this is a really small animal. There wasn't really much to, to, to work on. It's just your normal... It's just your normal four-legged animal, really. Just kind of think of, when you're sculpting this, kind of think of a rat with the a similar face as a kangaroo. If, if you watched our kangaroo video, then you'll kind of see the face. Uh, it's, it's a little similar. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 it's pretty easy to work on these kind of animals once you once you're used to working on so many so many animal anatomies and whatnot so much i also use references from other animals such as rats and cats uh, i also use some references from a human uh, just because there were certain parts of the the rabbit i just couldn't get right i couldn't find enough reference images so i just looked at the next best thing i just kind of like imagined a human in the pose of a rabbit and it helped a lot. It, it really did help a lot. Also, in terms of references, reference images that you're going to be looking at, sometimes you're not always going to get the best reference images. You're either going to get something flat or something that just doesn't really help you. It doesn't give you enough information. And usually you're going to get like side views unless the animal that you are trying to sculpt is really popular. And there's just a lot of reference images for that, like uh lions for example there's a lot of reference images for lions but other reference uh, other animals they have little to no reference images sometimes and it can be really frustrating but sometimes you just take an hour or 30 an hour and 30 minutes or even close to two hours you can even take the whole day just make sure that you have enough reference images and take videos as well not just images so take videos, watch videos. Sometimes what I what I tend to do uh, when working on some animals' anatomy, I tend to have natural discovery or some kind of some some kind of similar video playing in the background, uh, and then I have the animal like running or something. I'm just looking at how it runs. I'm looking at how it hunts or feeds or anything like that. It's really interesting. It helps me kind of understand how the animal lives and how it moves and all that. Then another another place where you can get reference images, look for websites that offer like people people post 3D models there, like Sketchfab, for example. There's a lot of anatomy, anatomy uh, uh, models in there you can check out. Sometimes you'll just find skeletons, but you could also use that. You can just take the skeleton and then try to construct everything by yourself so try to see the anatomy that's on top of it so download the skeleton if you if you have to and then kind of kind of play around with it start adding uh, muscles onto it like the trapezius and all that or the pecs the pectorals and 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 all that the biceps and try to uh try to see if if it all works out just just don't don't do it 
well, when you don't have time this this is something you have to do like on your own time because it's just you experimenting it's research you're kind of just trying to learn things so if you're working on this just get as many reference images as you can and get videos as well there's also all the reference images make sure that they have the animal in multiple views not just the side view uh, you you need like the side, the front, the three quarter. You need a top view and all that. You need like for example here, you can see that, that this, there was a top view there. So just get multiple views and try to piece everything together. It will help a lot because if you're just getting reference images that are just side views and all that, it is gonna frustrate you. It's gonna irritate you. You're gonna lose your mind because you're gonna think that everything is just wrong. Everything that you're doing here is just wrong because sometimes. The, the reference images that you'll get you will you will already have worked on so much uh, uh, on the anatomy like for example here i'm working on the biceps femoris for example and then there's that uh there, there's the face here that, that goes around and all that or the or the um gluteus and then you'll get you'll see another reference that just has the animal in a different pose or the way they 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 modeled or the way they did their 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 muscle groups is just a lot thicker than yours it's gonna make you think am i wrong that are you the one that's wrong and all that so just get enough reference images get something that that can help you in the long run because it it really does help that's why i always i always urge people to get um or to spend at least an hour or two or the entire day just gathering enough images just gathering reference images for the pause kind of imagine a cat when i was working on this i kind of imagined a cat's pause uh, it, it was just the best reference that that i had in mind because uh, at first i was thinking maybe i should do it like a rat but then i realized no nah, it's not actually like that and then for the face here, as you can see, uh, like I always do, I always try to sculpt out what the face looks like with with skin, and then I add in the the uh, the echo shade details afterwards. Also, by the way, everything that I'm doing here is technically all my primary forms and secondary forms. I'm not even touching tertiary yet. I'm just going in and making sure that all the, 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 the primary forms are okay for all the muscle groups and the tertiary forms as well. And then later on, I will come in and add in, oh, sorry, not the tertiary forms, the secondary forms, the primary forms and the secondary forms are okay. And then later I'm just going to come back and detail all the tertiary forms. So your first phase is just always just making sure that the, the, the sculpt is okay in, in the primary, if all your primary forms are okay. Also, quick note, you might want to look at a silhouette of the model that you have, uh, just the same as when you're working with characters, make sure that you have a, a, a silhouette, just um, an overview, an all around overview of your entire model, your, your, your character's body. You just want to see everything from afar. Just zoom out a little bit, see if you can make out any details make sure that the silhouette is readable make sure that everything is proper when when you go back into into sculpting it's a lot easier if the silhouette is also correct and your primary forms are just they're just w done well so sometimes f as a quick shortcut for details and all that on the muscles because like, muscles have like this certain texture it's like lines so sometimes I've said before, I usually just use the clay strips as a cheat because it's quicker, it's much faster, and I can sculpt, uh, uh, I, I can change or deform the, the mesh extremely whilst I'm adding in those line details. But what I've, what I've started doing now is I, I, I still come in with the trees brush and still add in those little fine lines to make sure that everything looks really crisp and really nice because the clay strips brush even though it it's great and and all that it, it serves its purpose well i've mentioned many times before in previous videos that i really love the crease brush uh well not the crease brush the clay strips brush any kind of clay brush i love it it's just an amazing tool 
but the thing is sometimes it's it's kind of destructive sometimes it, you you really have to have a low brush strength to make sure that you don't destroy all the details around the area that you're trying to sculpt and the crease brush is just really really handy for for the kind of muscle details that we want to add all those lines because it's made for that the, the crease brush is made for making creases so we we kind of just want to use that kind of brush now uh, i've gotten into the habit of of after using the clay strips brush i come back with the crease brush right at the end in my tissue forms and then just make sure that everything looks really nice and tight so now right at the end here i'm just focusing on my tissue forms i'm still kind of adjusting or still kind of fixing some extra details in, in my secondary forms and all that but in my tissue forms here i'm just adding in the final touches um, i'm refining things as i've said before if your primary and your secondary forms are okay they'd be okay they are well done then tissue forms adding in details like uh, veins or the lines that you see in muscles uh, it's just going to be really easy and if you have any problems with the the, the the refining stage always go back uh, to a lower subdivision levels and fix those major problems remember the lower subdivision level is mainly for like huge movements like like you're trying to move or trying to change a, a big shape say for example you want to change the head or you want to change how the how the biceps look the biceps just don't feel thick enough uh, instead of you inflating in the in in the refining stage where you have all this this high level or uh, high level details and all that it's much best for you to just go down in subdivision levels like here for example i went down to a subdivision level of two just to make sure that i can move everything properly without destroying all the details that i just made in 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 the refining stage with the the, the high level of uh subdiv subdivision levels it's always best to just go down a subdivision level when you're making major movements and then your last subdivision level which whichever it is whichever number it is the highest one which is where you you're doing all your tissue reforms that's where you're just doing all the really small details the really tiny finite details for example if you're working on a character bust like a head your your highest level of details or your highest level of subdiv should be where you you add in things like pores wrinkles scars those kind of things if scars kind of they kind of depend because you could have a large scar that can also be done in your secondary phase or you, when you're working on your secondary forms but usually for those kind of details you just want to do it um, right at the end this last phase should honestly just be where you have the most fun well for me this is where i have the most fun because uh this is where i can add in really really awesome details that i wanted to, to add before because i feel like because i feel like the the hardest thing to do when you're working with a lower subdivision is trying to get enough detail but the mesh doesn't allow you because the subdivisions are just too low so you have to be really patient you have to also kind of tell yourself that you have to work on these forms before before adding in details and and and, and all of these crazy information to the mesh but i feel like that's the mistake that a lot of us make right at the beginning especially beginner artists and all that we we kind of tend to want to jump the gun or we want to we want to head to to all the finer details right at the beginning rather than focusing on our um our our, our major forms or our, our primary forms our secondary we just want to jump all the way to our tertiary so we made a lot of mistakes and I've, I've done that as well i think everybody has done that that's how you that's how you start and then that's how you grow so right here we're just adding in details that um that will just kind of solidify this this mesh or this model just making sure that everything looks nice and crisp also 
with some kind of with some muscle group, sometimes the crease brush or the the yeah the with the crease brush, it will add in too much of a gap. So what I usually do is I come in with the pinch brush afterwards to tighten certain parts of the mesh. It just looks a lot better. For example, if you're working on fascia, it, it's normally really thin. It sometimes when you when you're adding that kind of detail, it kind of looks thick if you're adding it with the clay brush. So I smooth it a little bit and then I come in with the pinch brush and I just squeeze things together to make sure that it actually looks kind of tight and it feels real enough. So as I said before. I'm just coming in with my crease brush a little bit. Um, I'm also changing with the clay strips just to cheat and uh, help me finish certain things uh, a lot quicker. Like right over here, for example, the pectorals, uh, it's a lot easier to do it with the with the clay strips, and then come back with the crease brush and then just add a, just that little detail that will that will sell the model that will make it feel real enough so for some really thin parts of the model or the the uh, echo shade that you're working on it's best to smooth it out so like here for example there's a there's a layer from the bicep femoris going around the knee but uh, i don't add the the line details because it doesn't really have the, those kind of details it's it's a fascia that just that covers the knee it's just a soft layer so rather than adding in all these lines that you see right here i smooth it out and then i leave it that way but then i still have the 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 smaller details uh, such as the soleus for example for uh, underneath the fascia so we could still see that kind of detail and that brings us to the end of this video i hope that you enjoyed i hope you learned something if you haven't seen any of our videos then please go and check out our channel we have plenty of information there some really cool videos that you might enjoy so please go and check them out if you haven't subscribed please subscribe please do that why haven't you subscribed yet and i hope to see you in the next one